we'll all have mechanical counterparts that we can control with our brain. Well, hey, it's closer than you think. This is now the Honda Corporation. That you put on a helmet, it picks up your radio from your brain, your EEG signals, and actually manipulates a robot. So the basis of the movie was, if you can do this, then why not make the robot perfect, immortal, sexy, strong? And then the moral of the, of the film was, who wants to be human anymore? Why not live an immortal life, the, God, the body of a god? And also, you can use this for mind reading, sort of. If you saw the movie with Angelina Jolie, uh, Salt, they actually had this in that movie during the interrogation scheme. When you tell the truth, your brain doesn't do very much. On the left is your brain telling the truth. When you tell a lie, you have to know the lie. You have to know the truth. You have to calculate the consistency of that lie with all the other lies you've been telling all these years. That's a lot of brain power. Your brain lights up like a Christmas tree. And there it is. So some people say it could be used as a lie detector. I'm not sure about that. It has to be tested in the courts. So there's a lesson here. And the lesson actually comes from a movie. When I was a kid, I used to watch so many science fiction movies, read so many books. My favorite science fiction movie was a movie called Forbidden Planet, which really changed my outlook on life. The movie Forbidden Planet starts on the left with a civilization a million years ahead of ours. A million years. They have power beyond comprehension. This is a power plant from the Krell Empire. You can see the little people, the little people walking down the gangplank surrounded by the enormous engines of the Krell. And what do they do? They could create robots on the right, on the left. They had mind-reading machines. That, that little girl that was materialized exists only in your mind. You simply dream of things, and they become real. So, on the day of their greatest achievement, they announced that they were going to perfect the greatest of all inventions, infinite power without instrumentality. In other words, telekinesis. Psychokinetic power. By thinking... You will manipulate objects around you. By thinking, you'll create things. By thinking, you'll create three-dimensional objects. That was the crowning achievement of their empire. But you know what happened? One day, they all disappeared. Every single one. And that's the riddle of the movie. What happened to the Krell? Well, at the very end of the movie, I'll tell you what happened. At the very end of the movie, they're attacked by monsters. Where do the monsters come from? And then they figured it out. The Krell made one fundamental mistake. The day they created this infinite power without instrumentality, they went to sleep. They forgot to turn the machine off. And the machine kept materializing their dreams, their nightmares, the savagery of their past, and they committed mass suicide at the day of their greatest achievement. So there's a lesson here. We will have this power, not in a million years. We're going to have this power in a few decades. Already, we can begin to connect the mind to a computer. Now let's talk about medicine, and I want to get into the video for today. Remember that old movie, Fantastic Voyage, starring Raquel Welch? Well, the critics panned that movie. They said, ha, a submarine inside your body? Give me a break. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. The promise of nanotechnology curing cancer. How small can you make a computer? Well, on the left, we have something the size of an aspirin pill. There, it has a TV camera inside. It has a chip inside. And what do you do with that computer? You swallow it. And when you swallow it, it's guided by magnets. It photographs your stomach, photographs your intestine, and we all know what middle-aged men fear the most. The C word, colonoscopy. This will replace colonoscopy. This gives new meaning for the expression, Intel inside. <laughs> and we can even make it smaller than that. We can bring it down to the size of molecules. This is done already. Mass General Hospital in Boston will market these things in three years. This could be the cure for cancer. 
we will have small little molecules in our body that are smart bombs. They go and they seek out cancer cells and zap them. We've already tested this, 90% accurate in one test against one form of cancer. Today, when we think about the past, medicine, we realize that in the old days you had leeches because blood was thought to be impure. You had to bleed. In fact, how did George Washington die? Look it up in your history books. George Washington, the father of our country, died because he was bled to death. Bloodletting, bad blood, was common during the Revolutionary War. That's how our great president died. We will look at bloodletting. We will look at leeches like our children will look at chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is like a shotgun, killing ordinary cells until your hair falls out, you vomit, your skin prematurely ages. It's horrible. In the future, we'll have smart bombs. They already exist. And they're being tested now in Bethesda, Maryland, at the National Institute of Health. And how will we have our body checked up? Today, of course, you've got to go to the doctor and have your body checked up. In the future, your toilet will be your doctor. You'll go there three times a day. He makes house calls. And your toilet will analyze your proteins of your body and tell you that you eat too much, too much sugar, too much salt. Isn't the future wonderful? Even your toilet will tell you that you eat too much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you will see in the video, this could be the cure for cancer. And how's that? Because today, if you feel your breast, if you're a woman, you feel your breast, you feel a bump. It's a tumor. It's malignant. It's too late. It's really too late. The doctor doesn't want to tell you, but you have 10 billion cancer cells growing in your breast. Surgery is required immediately. 10 billion cancer cells. In the future, you will go to the toilet. There's going to be a chip in that toilet that picks up proteins from 100, 100 cancer cells in a colony of cancer cells. Hey, this is big. This is real big. Because it means the word tumor could disappear from the English language. You know, Aretha Franklin, she has pancreatic cancer. Sad to say, but pancreatic cancer kills you real fast. few years, you're gone with pancreatic cancer. Just a few weeks ago, it was announced that they've sequenced the genes of pancreatic cancer, and they find that it actually grows over 20 years. We thought it was a fast-growing cancer, right? It killed Patrick uh, Swayze of Dirty Dancing. It's killing Aretha Franklin right now. We thought it took, it was a very fast-acting cancer. We were wrong. It takes 20 years to grow a tumor. But during the first 18 years, there's no way to prove it. In the last two years, you die. This will solve that problem. This will detect cancer colonies 20 years before a tumor forms. Hey, this is big. And it already exists. And this is what it looks like. This is what's going to be in your toilet of the future. Little chips that detect proteins from cancer colonies. And, you know, Star Trek, they have the tricorder. A guy is sick on, on Star Trek, right? And they don't want to have to pay too much union dues and, and too much union salary. So they have a tricorder to see what, is he's, what he's all about. What's wrong with you, right? They don't want to go into all the di diagnostic jargon of trying to figure out what's wrong with you. A tricorder instantly tells you what's wrong. Science fiction? Nope. On the left is an MRI machine. Huge, gigantic. It was invented by Paul, Hurst, Paul Ernst, who actually was my boss when I was in high school. He won the Nobel Prize in physics for the invention of the MRI machine, my boss. On the right is the world's smallest MRI machine. It is the size of a purse, a large purse, invented in Germany. And how small can you make an MRI machine? The smallest MRI machine will be the size of a cell phone. That is a tricorder. We will have the tricorder of Star Trek. In fact, ever watch old episodes of Star Trek? It's so clunky because most of what they have in the movies we already have. We have cell phones. We have talking computers. The only thing we don't have is warp drive. And I'm working on that. <laughs> anyway, let's get into medicine. Your genes can now be sequenced for about $10,000. $10,000, you get a disc with all your genes on. I had my genes sequenced. BBC Television took some of my blood, 
sent it out to Vanderbilt University in Tennessee. I had most of my genes sequenced. So you will have not just the ability to sequence your genes, you will have the ability to sequence life. This is an ear. It's made out of plastic. Looks like a sponge, right? We seed it with cartilage cells from your ear. It grows into the ear and creates a perfect ear. And then the plastic is biodegradable. The plastic dissolves, leaving a perfect ear. This is bone on the left, ears on the right. We can grow them from your own cells without rejection mechanism. This is the human bladder grown three years ago. We can now grow windpipes. An entire windpipe was grown for a woman who had a diseased windpipe. Today, not tomorrow, today we can grow skin, cartilage, noses, ears, bone, blood vessels, heart valves, now bladders, now windpipes. Next to be grown is the liver. Isn't that great for all you alcoholics out there in the audience? I mean, hey, Mickey Mantle died of liver failure. The great American icon died of liver failure. And we will have the ability to grow these organs. Now I'm going to put on a video. And the video will take you to the future where we will talk about growing organs of the body. We're now going to go to the year 2057, compliments of the Discovery Channel, talking about the future of medicine. Machines interact like people, and bodies can be rebuilt from scratch. How will we wage war, fuel our need for power, commute to space? What life-saving innovations will be possible in the next 50 years? Flying ambulances and intelligent clothing. Brain chips cure paralysis. Vital organs printed to order. See how scientists today are making visions of tomorrow real. Physicist and futurist Michio Kaku will guide you through the medical breakthroughs that will change your life. The future is closer than you think. It all starts now with the body. 50 years from now, you'll live in an intelligent house. You can program sensors to monitor your body and keep you healthy, yet guard your privacy. Caution. Alcohol level. Because any information you reveal could come back to haunt you. Let's keep this between us. Computer chips connect you to the entire city including your insurance company. The good news is you'll live a lot longer because an agent gives you a remote physical every three days. The bad news? You'll have no secrets. Wait, mucous membrane of the mouth? Send health memo immediately. Bonjour, Monsieur Degas. Here are a few more tips for your dental care. Brush your teeth regularly using the ultrasound toothbrush. Which will give away the fact that Alan was partying last night and his premiums will go up as a result. Thanks for your attention. You must be joking. Get the car, please. Alan's clothing looks quite ordinary, but that's deceptive because woven inside the fabric are dozens of tiny computer chips and sensors monitoring his health. When he puts on his clothing, he goes online. Now get this. If he's ever knocked unconscious, his clothes will automatically identify his coordinates, alert the authorities, and upload his entire medical history before the ambulance arrives. In the future, you will have a doctor in your clothing. When you have a severe accident, brain cells can die within six minutes. The ambulance of tomorrow will not only reach you in time, it will carry a medical revolution that can save your life. 